Today we're in Miami for another episode of Talking Watches. We'll be speaking with a man who's the host of the highest rated television show on Univision, reaching more than 2 million people every single day. He's a multiple Emmy Award winner. He also happens to be a watch collector. His name is Raul de Molina, and today we're Talking Watches. So Raul, thank you so much for inviting us into your home today. It's a pleasure to have you here. So if you could, tell us a little bit about you, your earliest days as a professional. Look, I'm working now on TV for the last 23 years. I work on Univision Network. Uh, I have a daily show with Gordy La Flaca every day at 4 p.m. We have a lot of fun. We interview celebrities. We talk more and more now about, you know, Kim Kardashian and Justin Bieber and, and all these people. And we do, when it's serious, serious news, we go live every day to New York, live to Los Angeles, and live to Mexico. Before that, I used to be a photographer. When I finished high school in Miami, I came from Spain when I was 16 years old and originally from Cuba. I graduated from the Art Institute of Fort Lauderdale and I started freelancing for the Associated Press. I love taking news pictures. A little bit later, there was a very famous series that started in Miami, Miami Vice. I started taking pictures of this series, and from being a serious news photographer, I went to take pictures of Philo Michael Thomas and Don Johnson, and I became like what you call a celebrity photographer, in other words, a paparazzi. Princess Carolina of Monaco in Jamaica, Princess Diana, Oprah Winfrey coming out of the gym at the Four Seasons in Nevis when she was a little bit overweight. And uh, that picture was the cover of the National Enquirer. The wedding was Jane Fonda and Turk Turner. I did it for the National Enquirer from a helicopter in Tallahassee, Florida. And that was the cover of many magazines also in Europe and around the world. So how did you get into watches in general? What's kind of your collecting I'm, I'm going to tell you something. When I left Cuba, I was 10 years old. I went to live in Spain and I love auto racing. And I would see that they always in the magazines that I would buy sports out of from France, Champion, Formula Magazine, they always advertise these watches that have a lot of stuff on. And I wanted to have one of these watches. And I remember my grandmother one time playing one of these lotto tickets. She wants about $3,000. And she went and bought me an Omega. And I gave it to my father later on when I came to the United States. And I always wanted to have watches like that. And I love big watches. Then I was also when I was a kid, a big wrestling fan, mm -hmm. and I would go take pictures of the wrestling matches. I started sending my pictures to different magazines, and one of the magazines in Tokyo, where wrestling was very popular, hired me to take pictures for them. So I saved some money, and I purchased this watch. I believe it was about $1795, $1800, probably in 1979. And so after the Rolex, where did you go from there? Well, I started getting a bunch of watches. We were in Dubai one time, and what do you do when you go to Dubai after you see the city for a whole day? Yeah. You go shopping. Yeah. There is nothing else to do there. Yeah. <laughs> so we go from a store to store, and they have this. I had never seen as many watches as you see in Dubai, in the jewelry stores. So Frank Miller was very popular back then. So I found this one with a blue strap and the blue watch and all that. And after negotiating it for two days, I finally went back to the shopping center and I got it. And I've noticed that, that Panerai plays a, a big part. In I the love Panerais. For me, are my favorites, and my favorite is the one that I'm wearing. What I like about this Panerai is the simple that it is. And the only thing that I hate about this watch is that it's the plexiglass on the, you on know, the instead of the, instead of the, the sapphire. sapphire. Yep. And so it seems that you have a proclivity towards larger watches. Yeah, I like large watches. I'm a big, heavy guy, but I work out every day. <laughs> I just love to eat. I mean, I don't think I'm going to look right with a little watch. Mm -hmm. Uh, even though some of the Rolex that are 40 millimeters, I think are beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love this green vessel. I mm -hmm. even like it better than the blue one that is, uh, the white you know, gold. the white yeah. gold. Yep. I, I love this watch and I think this is one of the most beautiful that Rolex makes. Now, when this one came out, instantly still, the Jet Master 2, as soon as they announced it, I said, I need to have it. People were telling me, once I got this watch, why are you wearing this watch so much? I usually change my watches every three or four days. And I think I had this watch on for about six or seven months. I think it's beautiful, the white face, the way they do it with this blue. The only thing that I don't like that much is that they put Jack Master here. Yeah. If they wouldn't have put Jack Master here, it would have been perfect. Hmm. This is a watch that I got in Puerto Rico at the Cartier store. Mm -hmm. 
I like it a lot because it's rose gold and it's very elegant. Mm -hmm. And when it came out, I say, oh, I need to get it. I went to the Cartier store in San Juan and I was able to get it for them for a, for a fairly good price. Mm -hmm. And um, now I wear less and less. I think it's a little bit too flashy. Tell me a little bit about the, the IWC. This is the last purchase that I made. Hmm. And I always wanted to have a watch like this with a moon face yep. and an all Perpetual that. Perpetual calendar, sure. I trade in a Panerai. Uh -huh. I trade in another watch and then I pay the rest with money and I, I, and I have this watch and I think it's beautiful. That's a fantastic watch. I think this is one of the most beautiful watches that I have. Now this other one was all the trips and I've been lucky enough because I love to travel. I love to eat and to travel. And I think all the money that I make uh, working on TV, I spend it besides watches, eating and traveling. This watch has been to more countries than any other watch that I have. From Burma to uh, South America to Chile, uh, to Tibet, uh, to Africa, everywhere. Now, I have another watch that was a Gerard Parra gold that I was wearing in Mexico. It was not gold, it was Stanley still, very low key watch. And I came one day out of a restaurant, I got into the car, and when I got to the next corner, two guys came in with guns. They put one gun to my head, they put another gun to the driver's head, and then they point to the watch. I took the watch and I gave it to them. My producer was sitting in the back seat, and I told him, can I have your watch? I said, no, they haven't asked for my watch. Give me the watch. And I gave it to them also. Wow. And that was scary. I can imagine. And they took the other Gerard Parago that I had. <laughs> So if you could, are there any watches that you have your eye on? Any watches that you would love to own someday? I like the IWC military, mm -hmm. the big pilot. Mm -hmm. Maybe I, get, I will get one of that. I'm looking at another Panerai, uh, maybe the Rolex that I told you about. But that's about it. I know it all depends what is in the moment. It's something that I like. This is one, I believe, one of the most beautiful watches that I have. I think it's, you know, look how thin it is. It's a beautiful design. And I think what they did with this watch that is not round, it's like this, it's, it's beautiful. And when I have it in vain that I have to wear a tuxedo, I have to decide between wearing this or this. Mm -hmm. And lately, I've been wearing this. I love watches. I love, uh, I mean, uh, I think it's unique pieces. It's something that I will not say is as much as a collection, but it's something that you can wear every day because so many people collect different things, stamps, all this, but you can not show that. You feel good when you put a watch and then you change and you put another one. Mm -hmm. And it's not for what people are saying, it's just what you like. Sure. And I like to see the watch on me. That's what I like. I don't care about what other people think.